Hi guys, today's topic about submandibular salivary gland anatomy. It is paired second largest salivary gland second to the parotid gland. And these submandibular salivary gland having weight about 10 to 15 gram and walnut in size. It is situated in the digastric triangle below the mandible and the mandibular fossa you can see in this picture and these gland having two parts one is superficial part situated superficial to the myeloid muscle and deep part which is situated deep to the myeloid muscle and superficial part is larger part and deep part is smaller part so this is the Submandibular gland having two part. This is superficial part and this is deep part. And deep part is just below the myeloid muscle. This is myeloid. And this superficial part is situated in the digastric triangle. This is digastric muscle. And between the above this, between the hyoglossals and myeloid, this smaller part is deep part of the gland. This submandibular gland having duct, this is called Wharton's duct about 5 cm in length. This Wharton duct arises from the superficial part and it having turn in the superficial part so that this part of this submandibular gland is called genu. In this genu having 80% of the salivary gland stone because it is bended part. So this bended part having more chance of the stones. And this duct passes through the deeper part and ultimately open in the sublingual papillae and in the floor of the mouth. So this duct is about 5 cm in length. It's called Wharton's duct. If you see the larger picture of J-shaped this submandibular gland, this is the deep part which is deep to the myeloid and this deep part situated between the myeloid muscle and the hyoglossus muscle and this superficial part is situated between the myeloid and here is the digastric muscle. So this J-shaped walnut size salivary gland is about 10 to 15 gram and this is the sac, second largest gland in the salivary glands second to the parotid gland this gland extend from anteriorly from fo mental foramen till the angle of mandible and superiorly it is situated deep in the mandibular fossa and inferiorly it is up to the extent in the digastric muscle or intermediate tendon of digesting muscle or you can say up to the hyoid bone. So it extends anteriorly for mental foramen to the angle of mandible superiorly mandible to the hyoid bone. So this is the extension of submandibular gland. Now this submandibular gland having three surfaces intro lateral surface or you can say inferior surface then lateral surface and medial surface the inferior surface related to the skin and cervical branch of facial nerve lymph node and facial vein lateral surface is related to the skin then mandible and some part of insertion of medial pterygoid muscle and facial artery and medial surface is mainly having myeloid muscles, some part of the digastric muscle posteriorly, lymph node, submandibular gland, deep part of submandibular gland, and duct. Twelfth cranial nerve and styloid hard muscles. So this 
three surfaces inferior surface lateral surface and medial surface of the submandibular gland the duct of submandibular gland is called Wharton's duct at about 5 cm in length and it starts from the medial surface of superficial part of the gland near posterior border of the mylohyoid. And duct make a loop inside the parenchyma of superficial part of the gland and this part of gland is called genu and this is the most common site of the stone formation. And it emerges from the deep part, runs forward, upward and open in the sublingual papillae. So this is all about the Wharton's duct. And the blood supply of the gland is mainly facial artery and facial vein, parasympathetic by the facial nerve through the cauda tympani nerve. And through the superior salivary nucleus from the pons and sympathetic supply from the superior cervical ganglia with plexus around the facial artery. So this is all about anatomy of submandibular gland. And this is the histology of the salivary glands and it is having luminal cells or extra luminal cells. So luminal cells are intercalated duct cells, striate cells, serous cells and acinar cells, mus mucous cells. These are the luminal cells which having a role in the luminal secretion, serous secretion, mucor secretion and extra luminal cells are basal cells and myoepithelial cells. So this is the histology of this salivary gland. In this video, we are showing 5 to 4 cm square cervical lymphangioma stage 2 suprahyoid unilateral side. Lymphangioma are benign tumor of lymphatic vessel showing marked predilection of head neck region. They may be simple lymphangioma, cavernous lymphangioma, cellular and diffuse and cystic type of lymphangioma. The staging of lymphatic malformation according to Seriz et al. They are stage 1 is unilateral infrahyoid, stage 2 is unilateral suprahyoid, stage 3 is unilateral infra and suprahyoid extension, stage 4 is bilateral infrahyoid and stage 5 is bilateral infrahyoid and suprahyoid extensions. Management mainly surgical excision. You can give radiation therapy, cryotherapy, electrocautery, sclerotherapy, steroid, embolization, ligation and laser surgery. But best treatment is surgical excision as we did in this case. Thank you so much.